And some even, there we go, I'm on now, sorry about that. Let me start over. <laughs> In the text that we just read from the Bible, it states that our giving should be done on purpose. Many believers give out of necessity or an obligation, and some even give grudgingly. The pastor said that I have to, <laughs> or I need to, so I guess I have to. Most believers don't give on purpose. Many of you, you probably heard uh, of a book that uh, a man by the name of Rick Warren wrote titled The Purpose Driven Church years ago. And I'm not endorsing his book tonight, but I am going to use his book title for my sermon. This evening, I want to preach on this, uh, this message, The Purpose, Dr or Purpose Driven Giving. Purpose Driven Giving. Uh, tonight, I want us, as we leave this church, to leave here with a new perspective on giving to the Lord. Uh, I want us to learn to give with a purpose, to give with a purpose. Uh, the Bible says here in verse number seven, every man according as he purposeth in his heart. And so I believe it's important tonight that we give, but I feel like it's even more important that we give with purpose. And so uh, tonight, let's begin with a word of prayer as we speak on purpose-driven giving. Let's pray. Lord, I pray that you'd help us tonight as we uh, look and examine this passage of Scripture that you've given us, that we would not just give out of uh, necessity, we would not give grudgingly, uh, we would not give because someone told us to do so or maybe burdened us to do so, but Lord, I pray tonight that we would leave this place recognizing the true importance of giving, and that is giving with a purpose. And Lord, you want us to give that way. I pray tonight's message would help uh, uh, help us to be focused on that particular thought from your word. Help us now, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. The Lord is teaching us a very important principle concerning our giving here in verse number six. If you'll look with me at verse number six, the Bible says this, but this I say, he which soweth, what's it say? sparingly are you there he that spoke so it's sparingly shall reap also sparingly or that word sparingly means a little and he which soweth bountifully or a lot shall reap also bountifully so the lord's given us a principle here and it'd be wise for us to pay attention to these principles from god's word and the bible is telling us here that if we give little we get little return if we give a lot, then we get a lot in return. And, you know, so goes in most of our, uh, the, the same thing goes for a lot of things in our life. If we don't put a lot in, we don't get a lot back. I think I spoke about that recently in a sermon. Now, the principle, however, should not be the basis on why we give. Did you hear me? This principle here that we looked at, verse number six, should not be the basis on why we give. Some people strictly give to the Lord because they want to get something in return. That ought not to be your, your purpose of giving tonight. Are you hearing me? It ought not to be, well, I'm going to give a lot to the Lord so I can get a lot in return. Hey, we ought to give to the Lord whatever He asks from us, whether we get any return at all. But the Lord does give us a principle here, and He does give us a promise here that if we sow to the Lord bountifully, we will reap bountifully. And that's uh, the cherry on top, amen? How many of you like to eat the cherry on top of your ice cream? What are they called? Mar Marchino cherries? Is that what they're called? Uh, I love those things. Now, I love that my family does not love those things. I, I think most of them don't love them. And so whenever we go out for ice cream, I get all the cherries. And so that's wonderful. So if I ever go, and as long as you don't lick it and then give it to me, that's fine. You know, let me take it off there. But the Bible here gives us this principle in verse number six. And that's just the cherry on top. That's the bonus that God says, hey, if you give and you'll give bountifully, you'll reap bountifully also. But I don't want that to be the main reason that we give. Amen. This should be for our recognition that God always rewards our faithfulness in giving. God rewards our faithfulness in giving. Now, I want to give you a couple points tonight. Number one, purpose-driven giving is for everyone. Purpose-driven giving is for everyone. Look with me at verse number seven. What's the first two words there? Every man. Every man. So purpose-driven giving is for 
everyone. God has called every believer to be a purpose-driven giver. God did not say every man according as he can fit it into his budget. (laughs) He did not say uh, every man give according to how he feels about it. God did not say uh, uh, every man give according as he has in the bank account. Uh, nor did he say everyone give according to uh, what the per- what the pastor says. The Bible says here that every man is to give according as he what purposeth in his heart. Tonight, I want you to learn to transform your giving that you give to the Lord and whatever it be, whether it be your talents, your time, your money, whatever we do for God, I want you to do it with a purpose, to have a purpose for it tonight. Now, uh, 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 Romans chapter 8, verse 28, you're familiar with that scripture. The Bible says, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. We see that word purpose again. Now, you and I are called according to a purpose tonight. Now, what is our purpose? Our purpose is to do God's will. Our purpose is to do God's will. We as believers have no right tonight to do our own will. You hear me? We, it, it, we, we can't just do whatever we want to do. Now, many times we do, but our purpose is to do God's will for our lives. Hey, if God created us, surely he has the right to tell us what we're to do, right? Right? And if we are responsible believers, we'll want to do what God wants us to do. We'll want to do His will. Man's purpose is to do God's will tonight. Man's purpose is to do God's will. That's what God created you for. God created you to worship Him, and He also created you to do His will, His purposes. Now, everyone can give something to the Lord. Did you know that? Everyone can give something to the Lord. We just need to purpose it, right? The the Bible says here, let every man according as he purposeth in his heart. Everyone can do something. You see, many believers have this presupposition that that, uh, uh, giving something, whenever, whenever the pastor or at church, when they're talking about giving, they automatically assume that's talking about what? Money, right? Talking about money. All right. Well, that's a false presupposition. It, 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 it could be our talents that we give for the Lord. It could be uh, our time that we're giving to God. God has given us many things. God wants us to be responsible givers in all those things and to do it with a what? A purpose. With a purpose tonight. Now, we see, first of all, that we are to be a, a, a purpose driven giving is not just for some people. It's for everyone. It's for everyone. Every man according as he purposes. Then number two, purpose-driven giving is from the heart. Purpose-driven giving is from the heart. Look with me in verse number seven. Every man according as he purposeth, where? In his heart. In his heart. We should purpose to do anything that the Holy Spirit lays upon our heart. You see, God has given us the Holy Spirit, and God has given us the Holy Spirit to convict us of things that we need to do. When we hear preaching, when we read God's Word, huh? the Holy Spirit speaks to our what? Speaks to our hearts. He speaks to our hearts and gives us direction on what we should be doing. Hey, that's why it's so important for us to expose our hearts to convicting preaching and teaching, amen, from God's Word. It's so important that we expose our hearts to that because if we're not exposing our hearts to convicting preaching and teaching, guess what? We'll never do anything for the Lord. That's why we come to church, so that we can, uh, someone said we come to church so that we could have someone stand up, holler, spit, and scream, and tell us to do what we wouldn't tell ourselves to do, amen? Amen. And that's the truth. And so tonight as believers, let's decide that we're going to have purpose-driven giving in our life and that it comes from our heart. 
As the Holy Spirit speaks to your heart tonight, as the Holy Spirit surely spoke to our heart this morning through Brother Horace, as the Holy Spirit speaks to your heart on a week-to-week basis as you open God's Word daily and read it, be sensitive to it. Be sensitive. 1 Corinthians chapter 22, verse 19, we see that the Lord is so concerned about us preparing our heart. I want you to look at that passage of Scripture with me. 1 Corinthians chapter 22, verse number 19. 1 Corinthians chapter 22, verse number 19. Verse number 19, now set your heart and your soul to seek the Lord your God. The, uh, God. Th- that, that word set there means to prepare. You and I need to prepare our hearts to seek the Lord our God. Arise therefore and build ye the sanctuary of the Lord God to bring the ark of the covenant of the Lord and the holy vessels of God into the house that is to be built to the name of the Lord. So it's important as believers that we set or prepare our hearts for the Lord tonight. Are you with me? But here's the thing. Sadly, so many times we give to the Lord so mechanically. (laughs) So mechanically. We usually uh, don't do it from our hearts. We do it maybe because uh, uh, the pastor said to do it, or uh, we know that God wants us to tithe, and so we give, and we have a certain amount that we give. We do things so mechanical in the Christian life. But if we're truly being led by the Holy Spirit, then it's not going to be something set that we do. It's going to be something that the Lord lays on our heart. Amen? You see, God commands us to give the tithes, but what God really loves is when we purpose in our heart to give to the Lord. When we say, Holy Spirit, lay on my heart what you want me to give. Hey, do you want to know true joy in giving? Then you start giving what the Holy Spirit lays upon your heart. Amen? Hey, I don't want you to say, well, I'm giving what the pastor told me to give. I'm giving what uh, one of the assistant pastors asked me to do. Uh, I'm doing what I read. No, let's do what the Holy Spirit speaks to our hearts about. And that involves us being sensitive to His leading. Being sensitive to His leading. Someone said to me one day that a uh, pastor... You know, I just can't give because I don't like making commitments. I don't like making commitments because I realize if I make a commitment and I break that commitment, I hate breaking commitments. Now, why is it that we have no problem making commitments to the cell phone company? Hmm? 36 months, 48 months, pay that cell phone off, huh? We have no problems making commitments to the local car dealership on your car that you can't afford, huh? We may have no problems making commitments to Visa, MasterCard, Discover, American Express, hello? We have no problems making commitments to our banking lending institution when we borrow to buy a home, but yet we can't make a commitment to God. Hello? The Bible says as we purpose in our hearts, And listen, every commitment that we make in our lives is preceded by purposing in your heart to do something. You had to purpose in your heart to do something. So the question is, what are you purposing in your heart to do? If God, through the means of the Holy Spirit, has spoken to your heart, then purpose in your heart to do it. Amen? Are you with me? Shake the marbles. Amen? Every commitment that we make must come from our hearts. Listen, that's why at the dealership, they bring you to the nice cars and they open up that door and they let that sweet new car fragrance fragrance come out. You go, oh, it smells so good. What are they doing? They are touching the senses there. <laughs> They're showing you this nicely washed car. They're showing you with, you know, no, no Cheetos on the floorboard and uh, no rips in the seats. And they're going, look at this. This could be yours. Hey, they're touching your heart. 
They're pulling your heartstrings, huh? You see the car commercials, you know? Wouldn't you like to be in this car, you know? And, and uh, I'm trying to think of all the different ones. But uh, listen, they're working on your heartstrings because they want you to make a commitment. And listen, when we hear the Word of God preached and when we read God's Word, the Holy Spirit is speaking to our hearts. Why do we tune Him out? Amen? Why do we tune Him out? Let's decide. Let's purpose in our heart to commit to the Lord. Every commitment is so important to God, but it must come from the heart. You see, God is also concerned about our heart's purpose and what we do. Um, Isaiah chapter 1 verse 11 says this. You can write it down, look at it later. The Bible says, To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me? To what purpose? See, you see, God does want you to give to him, but God wants you to have a purpose-driven giving. He wants to know what is your purpose for it. Amen? Hey, we see in Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 20, the Lord says, to what purpose cometh there to me incense from Sheba? To what purpose? Once again, the Lord wants you to give to him, but he wants you to do it with what? With a purpose. With a purpose. You see, purpose-driven giving is for everyone, the Bible says here in verse 7. Purpose-driven giving should come from the where? From our hearts. From our hearts. Hey, we need to expose ourselves to good preaching. We need to expose ourselves to convicting preaching. We need to expose ourselves to God's Word as we read it daily. And the Holy Spirit speaks to our hearts and He challenges us to do something for Him as God speaks to your heart. You know, uh, I was talking to my, uh, the men in my Sunday school class this morning. Before we open up God's Word, we need to ask the Holy Spirit to work on us. Before we start to pray, we need to ask the Holy Spirit to work on our hearts and to make it sensitive. I, I've done it. I've opened up God's Word. I've prayed without having any purpose, without having the Holy Spirit speak to me. And guess what? It's so much more powerful when you ask God to prepare your heart for it. God is concerned about your purpose today. He wants you to have purpose-driven giving. What are you doing for God? If you're doing something for the Lord, if you're giving something to the Lord tonight, decide you're going to start doing it with a purpose. Not just mechanically. Not doing it because Brother Horace stood up here and said so. Because Pastor preached it. Uh, no, and, 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 and there's nothing wrong with this, but doing what God's Word tells us to do, we ought to do that. Okay, but let's decide tonight. Let's do it with purpose. Number three, purpose-driven giving is exciting. It's exciting. Look with me at verse number seven. The Bible says, Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Amen. When we purpose to give to the Lord, it brings three different people joy. It does. It brings them excitement. It's exciting. First of all, it brings Jesus excitement. It brings Jesus excitement. The Bible says, for God loveth a cheerful giver. You said, I thought you said Jesus. Well, I'm sure if God's happy, Jesus is too, don't you? Amen. For God loveth the cheerful giver. Hey, God, God doesn't mind if you give. In fact, I heard a preacher, God said, God loveth the cheerful giver, but he'll take any old grump. But let me tell you something. God really loves it. It excites him when we give cheerfully, not grudgingly. Oh, I gotta do this. Huh? Not out of a necessity, but yet we do it with cheer. I remember one time I was at this church and every time this guy would give in church, he'd go, he'd put the offering plate, he'd go, glory to God. <laughs> and everyone looked like, what in the world's happening? And one time someone asked him, why, why do you do that? You know, why do you make a big scene? He said, the Lord loveth a cheerful giver. And he was excited. He's thankful for it. All right. So you and I need to give because first of all, we need to give with purpose and it's exciting to Jesus. Also, it's exciting to others. The Bible says, the Lord loveth the cheerful giver. 
giver. So that means if you're giving, somebody must be what? Receiving. I don't know about you, but when you receive something, isn't that exciting? Huh? Uh, when you get some mail, or uh, my daughter Liberty, she loves the mail. Uh, every day, I'm embarrassing you, aren't I? Uh, every day she comes home, she goes right for the mailbox, and she's looking in there. And listen, we all love getting mail until you're an adult, and then it's just bills, and you know, take the mail. <laughs> But we love getting things. Christmas, we just finished Christmas recently, and, and, and you liked getting things, right? The Bible says the Lord loveth the cheerful giver. God loveth the cheerful giver. So not only does it bring excitement for Jesus, but it brings excitement for others. And then also it brings excitement to you. The Bible says that you're, uh, the, uh, God loveth a cheerful giver. Cheerful giver indicates that you, the giver, must be happy. You must be cheerful, huh? So God wants us to give, but he wants us to give with purpose. And when we give with purpose, it brings excitement to Jesus, others, and you. Hey, what do you call that? Joy. Joy. Hey, when we give with purpose, it brings excitement to Jesus, it brings excitement to others, and it brings excitement to you. Number four, purpose-driven giving is promising. It's promising. Look with me at verse number 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. The Bible says, And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. There's a lot in that scripture verse, folks. Listen, purpose-driven giving is promising. It's promising because, number one, God is able because God is able. The Bible says there in verse number eight that God is able. Hey, God's promises are not dependent upon the economy. Thank God. Hey, God's promises are not dependent upon your 401k plan. Thank God. Huh? Hey, God's promises aren't dependent upon the federal government. If so, don't count on it. Hey, God's promises are not contingent upon uh, 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 whether you have a job or not. God's promises are true because God is able. Hey, I love that song we sing with the kids. He's able. He's able. I know he is able. I know my Lord is able to carry me through. Hey, thank God tonight that God is able. He's able. Hey, why do we give? We give because God wants us to, but we should do it with purpose. And when we do that, it's promising in that we know that God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we what? Ask or think. What a wonderful thought tonight. Not only is it promising because God is able, but it's promising because we're guaranteed to have a sufficiency in all things. Look with me in verse 8. The Bible says, And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that ye always having all sufficiency in all things. I like how the Lord uses all there a whole lot. Amen? Hey, all sufficiency in all things. Hey, wouldn't you love to have everything provided? You never have need of anything. It's all always available to you. Wouldn't that be great? Listen, when we give with a purpose and with a cheerful attitude, first of all, we recognize that it's promising because God is able to do it. It's not contingent upon the economy or COVID or, or whether uh, our 401k plan is going, uh, going well or not. It's only dependent upon God and God is able. Not only that, but we recognize that we're guaranteed to have a sufficiency in all things. God will provide for us. And then we see that it's promising because we're guaranteed to thrive. The Bible says here uh, uh, that we may abound to every good work. That word abound means to thrive in every good work. Hey, do you want everything that you do to thrive? Kaiser Permanente, their, their slogan is thrive. <laughs> I always have a new commercial coming out all the time, and we want you to thrive. huh? Listen, God wants you to thrive tonight. 
He wants you to abound in every good work. And how does that happen? When we give with a purpose. When we have a purpose-driven giving, listen, our life is going to abound. We're going to thrive. Thrive with good health. Thrive with... Now listen, I'm not talking about a... Uh, 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 a, a um, uh, 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 I'm trying to think of the word. It just went in my mind. It's what happens when you get my age. Uh, I'm not talking about w- that we serve God so that we get things or that, that, that God uh, you know, promises you know, good health if we give and such. But I am saying that God will provide all things for you and He's sufficient for you. And He'll cause you to thrive in every good work that you do. Let's start tonight being purpose-driven Givers. Amen? Purpose-driven givers. Someone once said, tithing is a debt we owe, but giving is a seed that we sow. Hmm? Listen, do you want to sow sparingly? If you do, you're going to reap sparingly. Do you want to sow bountifully, as the Bible says here in verse number 6? Then guess what? The Bible says you'll reap bountifully. You say, well, that's why I give, so I can reap bountifully. No, let's not do that. Let's give with a purpose. Let's purpose in our heart. You know what that word purpose in our heart is talking about? The Bible says that God wants us to make a commitment. What is your purpose? You know, a lot of times uh, in a business model, they'll say, the purpose of our company, the purpose of our business, all right, is this, and they'll say, this is our purpose. As a believer, God wants you to give with a purpose. What is your purpose for giving? Is it just so that you might get, or is it so that we might be pleasing to God? Because God loveth a cheerful giver, amen? Don't give grudgingly. Don't give out of necessity, the Bible says, but give with a purpose. How about you? Are you a purpose-driven giver tonight? Let's make a commitment to worship God this week through prayer and Bible reading with purpose. Let's commit to give towards God and give towards our faith promise giving that we've just focused on now for five weeks in a row. Let's decide that we'll give on purpose. Now, I know you say, Pastor, didn't you just tell us to to fill out a commitment card? (laughs) Yeah, I did. But let's be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. You say, well, I committed to $50 a month and that's all I'm giving. Hey, what if God speaks to your heart and says, hey, God, uh, or God says, hey, I blessed you a lot this month. How about you give a little bit more? Amen? Are we giving out of necessity? Are we giving because of maybe some particular thing? Let's give on purpose, but let's be sensitive to the Holy Spirit's leading in our life. Let's purpose in our heart to give what God wants us to give. Let's make a commitment to give our time serving the Lord. Let's commit to giving our talents for God this year. We commit to everybody else. Why not commit to God? Amen? Right now, let's give, but let's be purpose-driven givers. Amen? Let's all stand. As Ms. Angie comes to the piano, the altar's here. What has God spoke to your heart about this evening? Do you give out of necessity? Do you give grudgingly because I have to? Or do